So, a new video format for Small Form Factor Network. This time we're going to look at the Corsair Platinum rated SFX power supplies that have recently been released. We have the 600 watt and the 450 watt variant. Now Platinum used to be a somewhat mythical rating for a power supply, let alone an SFX power supply. Last generation's power supplies almost got there, with some peaking over the Platinum rated in certain uh, load formats. However, we now have proper Platinum rated power supplies from Corsair. This video is brought to you by the HDplex AC to DC Nano ATX power supply range. Available in 80, 160 and 400 watt variants, the HDplex Nano ATX range has the power you need and a small form factor. Find out more at the link in the video description. One thing to note is these come with a 7 year warranty, which is fantastic. It would be great to see other power supply manufacturers come up with a similar level of warranty with other brands such as Silverstone, FSP and the like obviously offering significantly reduced warranties. So let's get these out of the way and have a look what's inside the box. So let's, uh, let's look at what's inside the box. We have a triplet of cable ties. These are Velcro style and branded, of course, because it is Corsair. We have a power lead for your area. Note that this is not the New Zealand power lead. However, this was a press sample, so you get what you're given. Zip ties, a case badge, which are coming back into vogue, which is interesting. Some screws. A well-packaged SFX to ATX adapter, because some cases still come with ATX power supply cutouts, which is just not acceptable. An important information booklet, which includes the usual warnings, as well as other information such as notification for Australian customers because their warranties are different there and the like. Speaking of warranty, here's a warranty guide and a full printed manual. I'll have, I've said it before and I'll say it again, printed manuals are where it's at. Nobody wants to be looking through forum threads or YouTube videos or anything like that to find out exactly how to wire up a power supply that they've purchased or what ratings their power supply has and the like. They want to, people want a printed manual to read. Very clear information that is available in here including the various uh, protections which I've tested. All of them work by the way. Different specifications including cable lengths, the efficiency curves for both the SF400, uh, 450 and SF600 power supplies. Installation guide, zero RPM mode, very important to know this. The fan doesn't spin up until sufficient load or heat is uh, placed in the unit. Safety standards, and on to the next language. Right, cabling. All of the cables are sleeved with a nice soft touch fabric style sleeve. All individually sleeved cables. The cables are quite firm and can be formed to the layout of how you want it in your case. Not perfectly firm, but enough to get what you need. One thing I still don't like about these modular power supplies is split cables like this. They're a pain to re-sleeve and they're just a pain to manage. Included in this we have the ATX cable, the EPS 12 volt cable which means split into two for some other, uh, some other boards that don't have uh, a 8 pin connector, four SATA plugs, three Molex for old schoolness, and a pair of graphics card ones. One thing I'd like to see happen with the modular plugs on power supplies, especially when it comes to the graphics card style, is having it split at the power supply end as well as this end. For example, I test with an R9-270X and that, that particular graphics card has two six pin cables, which means this section here is just dangling in the breeze inside the case, which is uh, makes it more difficult to cable manage. Let's have a look at the power supply unit itself. This is the 450 watt unit, whereas the 600 watt unit looks exactly the same, just different stickers. Obviously different internal. One thing to note is this residue here left by the fanless sticker. This is kind of annoying and I really wish Corsair would have included a sleeve such as what Silverstone does. The peeling the label off, which blocks the power, the power plug so you know that this has a fanless mode, just leaves this gross residue here. So we have 450 watt. On the back here we have the modular plugs which are identical to the previous generation. Here is a chart with the pinouts that we tested in the last review that we did for this power supply. So hit pause if you want to find out more. The rating sticker, which has includes all the certifications as always, the ratings for each particular rail, maximum wattage, 
and it is its 450 watt power supply. Yes, the quality control passed. Yeah, one thing to make clear here is this is a press release version. So this may or may not have been cherry picked for press. Uh, just take that with a grain of salt. Because it's a press release version, we've been given a test result for each of these power supplies, which I've included in the link in the description below. The fan is a 92 millimeter fan and it is PWM. So let's tear one of these down and see what's inside. Here's one I prepared earlier. As you can see, four pin fan, PWM. That is a 12 volt DC fan at 0.22 amps, which is a relatively lightweight fan. So we can see, same residue on the front. Digging a little deeper, here is the 600 watt unit. Internally, very similar to the 450 watt unit, just slightly different power ratings on the important components. As you can see, high quality capacitor from, yeah. as I thought, Nippon Chemicon. Of course, it does claim all Japanese capacitors, which is important as no name brand ones out of uh, other countries can be very low quality and nobody wants their power supply blowing up because generally it takes the rest of your computer with it. Lots of hot snot as Dave from EEV blog would say. Standalone controller board. This is a very difficult power supply to take apart as this section here, the input board is soldered to here. Turning it over, we've greeted with a aluminium foil sheet. Underneath, more components including a section here with a thermal pad for more control circuitry. Yeah, overall, decent quality of soldering. I see a couple of slightly cold solder joints such as this one. However, that's to be expected with mass production. It, there is no bridge traces, there is no schmoo sitting around. They've cleaned the board of old flux. I did expect this power supply to last for a very long time. Overall, a well-built power supply. The protections that I did test, the over temperature and short circuit did work. I was unable to test over current as I do not have enough hardware around to even load up a full 450 watt power supply, let alone a 600 watt unit. Working on it, I'm looking at it, finding an old Fermi graphics card or two. Through the testing that I performed, I found that even the 450 watt power supply did not even turn the fan on at idle on a test system. This is quite handy to have, it is a nice balance between a completely fanless power supply like the Silverstone Nightjar power supply that I reviewed recently and a full blown fan or fan always on kind of power supply. When the load was applied, which was a Pentium G4400 and a Sapphire R9270X, the fan spun up very quickly so it does detect wattage as well as temperature and once the load was removed, it took some time for the power supply fan to turn back off. However, this is probably a good thing because it makes sure that the entire of the insides of the power supply cools down completely before going back to fanless mode. One thing to note is that SFF Network does not have the component testers or power supply testers available to us to really get down to the nitty gritty of power supply reliability. For that kind of review, I would suggest waiting for, say, the Johnny Guru review as they have the equipment available. However, this is a brief overview as to the Corsair SF450 and 600 power supply. In my opinion, these are a great power supply. I've encountered no issues during testing. The only issues that I have regarding these power supplies is the cabling when, uh, with the ATX, being, ATX cable being split like this. And time for some glorious caliper shots. So, in length, Excluding the power jack, we have 100 millimeters or 100.8 millimeters, including the power jack, 105 millimeters. In width, 125.5. In height, 64 millimeters. The NR092L fan from Corsair, that is included with both power supply units, is indeed a 92 millimeter fan, and it also sits in at 50 millimeters thick. During the testing of the power supply I did find that even when the fan was spinning it was relatively inaudible. The oral characteristics are quite moderate, it's, there's no clicking, no tapping, no whining, it is just a nice smooth sounding 92 millimeter fan. Thank you for watching this video and thank you to Corsair for supplying these review samples. Note that these are press test units as I mentioned before so the results may be taken with a grain of salt. However, thank you for watching. This is another content experiment for Small Form Factor Network. Let us know how you feel about these in the link in the video description. That is a link to our forum. Make sure you check out our merch store, our Patreon, and other links in the description, as well as our sponsor, HDplex.
Thanks.